Hi and welcome to Free Python Course Tutorials. In this video, I'll talk about the MicroPython programming for the Raspberry Pi Pico. If you're a beginner or have no previous knowledge of Python programming, this video tutorial will get you started. The MicroPython is the implementation of Python 3 programming language. Um, it's been designed and optimized for microcontrollers, supports interactive prompt and some core Python libraries. It has dedicated modules to access hardware. There are several microcontroller boards that have been designed to use the MicroPython. Example is the Aritas microcontroller, the Pi board, and the Raspberry Pi Pico. In previous videos, I've shown you how to install your MicroPython onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. So your ability to use your MicroPython in your Raspberry Pi Pico makes your Raspberry Pi Pico operate a Python operating system. Now let's take a look at the micropython.org website and see the documentation for the micropython. So once you're on this website, you go to the docs, you go to the library reference. So for the library reference, it shows you all the micropython libraries and modules that you need for uh, programming your microcontrollers. So there are different uh, libraries here so there are a lot of libraries you can just go through and see what each library does so let's say for example we want to look at the library that controls the hardware for the uh, microcontroller so basically is the machine so if you click on machine right so uh the machine has all the uh functions that helps you interact with your um, outside world using your microcontroller so, for example, you have a reset uh, function that resets the device in a manner similar to, it, to pushing the external reset uh, button. Okay, so you have a soft reset. Uh, so you can just go through all the libraries and see which one uh, uh, you want to explore. So let's say you want to use a particular uh, um, function in your machine library. You can just come to your documentation page to see how uh, it works and how to use it. So let's take, for example, this class is in your machine library, um, the class pin. So this helps you to control your IO pin. So let's go to this, for example. So there are a lot of example codes there that will help you um, 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 design your um, codes for your microcontroller. So for example, in this case, you can create an output pin on pin GPO. GP0. So this creates a variable, configures uh, a pin, our IO pin on pin 0, and it configures it to be an output pin. So there are different examples you can go through later on. We are going to be uh, practicing using our Raspberry Pi Pico. So similarly, uh, if you want to um, turn on your, uh, um, your GPIO pin, uh, there are different methods you can use pin.value okay so uh, or pin.on so we'll practice some of this uh, later on yeah so feel free to uh, explore the micropython uh, documents on the uh, micropython.org website so if you want to use any other peripheral on your uh, raspberry pi pico or on any of the microcontroller that supports uh, micropython you can just come in and explore like the adc uh, post suite modulation, the UHAC, the SPI, I2C, uh, your real time clock, you want to work with timers, or you want to um, um, save to your SD card. So there are existing um, libraries or modules in your library uh, machine. Uh, so all of these are already on your uh, microcontroller if you have um, uh, installed or downloaded the uh, MicroPython firmware to your. Uh, microcontroller in this case our Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm going to be showing you some basic examples of MicroPython programming using our MicroPython Interactive Interpreter Mode aka REPO. So it stands for Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. So this just enables us to run our uh, MicroPython codes directly on our Raspberry Pi Pico using the shell prompt. So I'll be using doing some of some examples uh, for those of you who are new to uh, Python programming. 
So make sure your Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to your PC and uh, we can just practice some few examples. So the first thing you need to know how to use is comments, creating comments in your code. So you simply do that by using the hash symbol, then comments. So when I execute this, nothing happens. So what happens is this, the interpreter skips this line of command. So let me use the print statement. So now I've sent print hello world command to my Raspberry Pi Pico and my micro Python on my Raspberry Pi Pico has executed this command. So what it does is it sends back the hello world back so that it can be printed on my uh, shelf. Next, let's assign variables. So basically in assigning variables, you can just create any variable using the example A is equal to 30, um, B is equal to 70, and C is equal to B minus A. Um, so if I print the result, print C. Okay, it gives me 40. We can also format strings. Um, example, let's say my name is equal to Elijah. So when you're assigning a um, string, you have to use the double quotation mark and my age. So I could display this on my screen in a formatted way by saying print hello. Then you create a placeholder space. Then you use the format function in MicroPython. Provide the variables name and age. Okay. So if I execute this now, it says it says hello Elijah, my age is 34. So these are called placeholders. And you use the dot format function and you pass whatever variables you have created. So this helps you to format or present your data in a way that is more readable to your users. All right, let's look at data types. So for data types, there are different types. Uh, examples are strings. So for strings, you can either use your single quotation mark or double quotation mark. Uh, integers, values. So you can just declare the values. Float, uh, any value with a decimal point uh, is a float. Uh, complex numbers, you can either use your uh, J character to indicate that this is a complex number. Uh, for booleans, you can have your booleans to be true or false, or they could be one or zero. Uh, we also have dictionaries. So dictionary enables you to combine different types of data. Uh, let's say you want to create a database for uh, for credential of, of a student or a customer. So you can have the names, which are these are the keys and these are the data. So age and you define your age. Um, another data type is list. So list is a very common data type that is used in uh, Python programming or micro Python programming. So you'll be using a lot of this uh, um, uh, later on. So uh, for your list, you create a list by using a square bracket. All right. And another one is tuple. So for a tuple, tuple, you use a parenthesis. So the difference between a tuple and a list is that unlike a list where you can update the data in your list, for tuple, it's, you can't update the data in your tuple. So I will show you uh, some examples uh, later on. So let's look at working with list. So I can create an empty list by saying my list is equal to bracket. Okay, so if I print my list, to print my list. So it shows us that our list is empty. So I can populate my list by doing this. Uh, is equal to now if I print my list again now it shows us this data in my list all right so I can add 
another data by using the append uh, function. Okay, if I print my list again, so it shows that the new value has been added. So uh, Python gives you so many functions uh, that you can use with my list. Example, you can um, check the length of your list. Uh, so if we print, say, print length my list. So it tells us the length of our list. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, six items in our list. Uh, you can also check the maximum or the minimum values of your list. So let's say uh, maximum of my list. Okay. So it tells us the maximum value in our list is 39. Uh, minimum value as well. Okay. It shows us the minimum value of our list is uh, 3. As you can see, you can also delete an item from your list. Let's say we want to delete, you just use delete uh, my list. Then you have to specify the location of the item you want to delete. So bear in mind, in uh, Python, indexing starts from zero. So let's say, for example, uh, 3 is 0, index 0, 4, index 1, 5, index 2, 89, index 3 and 24 is index uh, 4. So, but in this case, we have six items in our list. I want to delete this last item. So that is gonna be index five. So if I put five here and I print my list again, so it has deleted item 34. So the length of my list has been reduced by one. Okay, um, so there are a lot of things you can do with lists. I'll provide a link in the video video uh, for more details on lists, where you can go and uh, practice some of the functions you can do with lists. Now, let's look at finite and infinite loops. So, these loops are very important when you come to MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico. So, let's look at an example of a finite loop. For finite loop, you use the for I in range 10. So we're creating a sequence of number from 0 to 9. Print I. So it's going to go on the iteration from 0 to 9 and it's going to print the values on the screen for us. So if I press enter, Okay, so this is what you see. So for finite loops, you know your starting point and you know your ending point. For the infinite loop, we can simply use the while statement. For example, while true. So the loop is going to continue to run forever until you terminate the process. So to terminate on your Raspberry Pi Pico, you just simply, simply click on the stop button. And you can clear your screen. Now let's look at flow control. So flow control is something you'll be using in your Raspberry Pi Pico. So we're going to look at a simple example. So we're going to count from one to Nine, from 0 to 9, and we're going to check if the value exceeds 3, our system should print the number exceeds 3. So in this example, I'll say for i in range 10, um, print, first we want to see print, okay. So now, if I run this code, it's going to print from 1 to 0, so let me run the code. You can see it prints from 0 to 9. Okay, now I can modify the code such that once the value exceeds 3, it should print number is greater than 3. So in this case, I will use my if statement if i is greater than 3, print number. Uh, 
So if I run this code now, all right, so you can see it starts scanning from zero, one, two, three. The moment the number exceeds three, greater than three, it begins to print number is greater than three. Okay. I can also modify the code to show when the number is less than three. So in that case, I will use my if statement. So I can go back one step and say else print else. Make sure you use your colon uh, print number is less than three. So if I run the code now, so you see what is happening. So once the number is less than three, it tells you number is less than three. So zero, one, two, three. This is number is less than three. Then the moment number exceeds three, see so number is greater than three. So you can use your if statement for your flow control. Next thing you want to learn is functions. So functions are created by using the keyword def. So you can give a name to your function, maybe threshold. So in this function, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna ask you to print um, numbers from one, from zero to nine. So I could say for i in range. Okay, so this is my function I've created. So the next thing is you call your function. So to call the function, you just use the name of the function. And you press enter. So if I call this function, it's gonna print from zero to nine, okay? So now we're gonna look at the function that takes in an input argument and returns an output argument. So for example, I have a function that checks temperature. So I'm going to pass in an input argument uh, by placing a variable name there. So the variable name could be anything, temp. Then I want to create a condition if temperature, that's the input variable, is less than or equal to 3, the condition sh should be normal. Else, if the temperature is greater than 3 and the temperature is less or equal to 7, uh, the condition should be warning. else the condition should be danger okay so if you have it this way um, make this w, make it normal. okay so if you have it this way let's see what happens when we call our temperature function so if i call the temperature function And I pass in an input value, that's the input argument, let's say three. If I press enter, let's see. So when I press enter, um, of course, it has checked the value and it has stated it is normal, but I cannot see the return argument. So we're gonna modify our uh, function to be able to return what is the result of uh, the particular uh, function. So in that case, I will modify my code and just used the return statement. So I will ask you to return condition. Okay, so if I repeat, if I repeat my check temperature again, let's see what we get. 
All right, so it shows the result is normal. So because we have a return argument, okay? So let's say I modify the value to six. So because the condition should be, once the temperature is greater than three and less than seven, it should be normal. So let's see, oh sorry, it should be warning, okay? So if I check if the temperature is anything outside of this range, it should be danger. So if I put, let's say nine, so it shows me danger. So this is how to use your function with input argument and return argument. So class is just a blueprint or template for our objects. And MicroPython is an object-oriented programming. So for every object, you need to create your properties and method. So let's look at how we create a class. So you use the keyword class. So I'm going to create a class called monitor. Then because this class is an empty class, it has no properties and um, methods, so I will just use the keyword pass. So I can check the type of data my monitor is. So it shows me it's a class uh, uh, data type. Okay. So now let's look at how to add properties to the class. So if I repeat that, in this case, I'm going to be using the def init function. So the def init functions enables you to assign values to your object properties. So let's look at an example. Def keyword underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Then you need to open your parentheses. Self. Then you need to assign, define the uh, variable, input variable or input argument. Let's say in this case temperature. Then now you can assign the value of this input argument to your uh, object property. So I'm going to create an object property called um, self dot temperature is equal to 10. All right. So now I can create an object for this class because it has a property called temperature. So if I say P1 is equal to monitor, so I need to pass in the input argument, which is my temperature. So it could be three in this case. So I can assess the value of my property temperature by saying P1 dot temperature. So it shows the value is three, okay? Um, so the next thing is this, in my class, I can have multiple functions. So let's say, for example, we want to check the value of our temperature. So to do that, I can simply Copy this code and paste here. So what is what happens here is this. So we have created a function to check if the value of our uh, property temperature is less or equal to three. If it's less or equal to three, it should print normal. So we can create a method for our class called monitor by using the line of codes. So for this method, we want to check the temperature. Remember, you must define yourself because this self refers to the instance of whatever object you create. So if self dot temperature is less or equal to three, it should print normal. So if I run this now and create another object, let's say P3 is equal to monitor and I pass a value, let's say one as my temperature value. Okay. So I can check the value of my property temperature. So it shows it's one. Then I can check the temperature method of my uh, object. So P3 dot. So it tells me it is normal. So this class monitor can have different methods. So it could be for a particular device you have, you have created in your Raspberry Pi Pico uh, project. So to check temperature, to check um, pressure, to check flow rate, to check um, humidity. So with this class, you can create multiple instances of an object. And with that uh, object, you can check any of the methods you want to use. All right. Thank you.